Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week five of the Overdrive League. We have Illumination Spectrum versus Anarchy to start off the day with Illumination on the blue side and Anarchy on the red side. I'd first like to thank Flash Ruler on behalf of the staff here for creating this new champ select setup. So let us know what you think about that during this little uh, champ select section. And finally, I'm joined here with my co-caster, Ketad. Uh, how are you doing tonight, man? Good, man. Uh, don't forget to introduce yourself here as uh, we oh. are having uh, the man himself, Canadian, doing just an excellent job with that opening. And yeah, week five is already underway. And so today's matchup is a match of the second place team in the league in Illumination Spectrum going up against the seventh place team in Anarchy. And so far, interesting to see because Anarchy is a team who uh, has shown so far that if they didn't forfeit the match, they actually have they've gone undefeated so far. Yeah. So it'll be very fun to see if they can continue this trend by uh, taking down the number two seed here in Illumination Spectrum. As we do have the bands already going way underway, and right off the bat, Irelia being taken away. As we do see that that's just I think, even though she did get a few nerfs in the last few. I'd say patches or so, uh, she still is a very strong pick. A lot of people are still playing her. And especially when you're looking at a, a gold league or around that level right now, it does add to the fact that, you know, if you know the champion, if you're able to play well on it, it can really be a very, very impactful pick in that mid-game power split. Yeah, for sure. Every time comes out. Um, but also, that was actually the mid laner who plays uh, Irelia most often in Duck solo, uh, so not really seeing in the top lane, but more of a uh, flex between uh, different lanes that they have, so a very strong pick for the side of Anarchy. Um, then also we see a Gangplank, uh, very popular within uh, Indigo's playstyle, and then also the Jinx being played. So. Yeah, no, the Jinx is a very interest is a very much more pick in terms of this current patch, right? If we're talking about Jinx as a whole, we're just seeing a lot of people, a lot of people playing her just because of those Q buffs. She, you know, it, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it buffed up some of the damage. It just gave, you know, this current patch is just giving crit ADs a little bit uh, of a window back into the game. You know, it's giving them a little bit more power, giving them a little bit more uh, playability, so to speak. It's not so much about the AD casters anymore, even though. Um, you still will see a lot of Lucian play and stuff like that. Uh, crit ADs definitely do have a window back in. And if you're a team that uh, favors that kind of team play, when we're talking about just having a, a team fighting composition with a late game scaling AD carry or a hyper scaling AD carry, that definitely can make a big difference moving forward. And I do like that ban away also with the Braum because Braum uh, is one of the also impactful support picks that does give way to allowing Jinx to kind of have that peel, have that ability to stay alive, move forward. And as we see that last Rakan being banned away as well, that does speak to that same kind of idea that you're taking away these peel slash engage supports, right? Things that can either tank up and, and keep damage away or just straight up negate their ability to start a fight in general. Now, on the other side, we do see the Vladimir being banned away. And so that, to me, Vladimir, Gangplank, Karelia, these all definitely feel like a little bit more of uh, comfort picks and things that you know, we're just expecting to see. Or we do rather these guys just don't want to let each other play. And so that definitely, I think, helps things moving forward as uh, we go through that way. What is that? I... How is... I'm seeing the Aurelia being hovered. Yeah, I believe really? that is a bug. Um, that should be something else right now. It's probably going to get changed out uh, as we're seeing the champs of like roll through. <laughs> um, don't worry about it. Okay, it seems like it was Trindamir. Trindamir was picked. Yeah, so it does seem like that was that first pick yeah. was the Trindamir. Not Irelia. <laughs> yeah, so, but still, in, in terms of the things, right, they took away the Irelia from the other side. Uh, maybe because they wanted to go for this matchup with the Trendemir to just kind of give themselves a little bit of a breathing room, so to speak, in that top side of the map. Yes, you 
you've been seeing a lot more Irelia's go to the mid lane. You've been seeing her played out in that area a lot more, but overall not too much of an issue, I think. Uh, however, that does speak to, I think, the the goals of what the side of Illumination Spectrum wants to do in terms of the fact that they just want to maybe split push or look for that. Although we have been seeing, and I think this is one of the more current meta stuff, is that we're seeing a lot of Trindamir going with that AP build to just kind of spin. It's like he's the upgraded Garen, right? He just spins and spins and spins for days and days and days, and that's really yes. how that pick plays out. And again, seeing these uh, picks roll through very quickly, um, it is a different system. Uh, so we're actually back a little bit. Um, to, uh, talk about each pick uh, more prominently. Um, so it's this: these uh, picks are not being shown to you just as they're being picked in the champ select. But in editing, we are showing them to you as they roll up. Um, so it's a little bit more smooth. So that's why there's a few little bugs happening right now because we're trying to still figure out all the kinks. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's still trying to, um, you know, I think get everything sorted out. So thank you guys for bearing with us as uh, we gotta get some stuff. Yeah, so we will, I think, get things sorted for the next game as uh we are already pretty much rolling right through so we'll just uh, kind of speed around speed around the picks that we saw on the screen as yep it should be popping up now so the echo varus brand and zinshell are being the rest of the picks for the side of illumination spectrum and on anarchy's side darius alistair zoe lucian and the graves also i guess first off like what do you think what do you think about these uh picks that are being taken uh, that got shown very quickly to people, so yeah, let's, for sure. let's move it down. For sure, for sure. Um, definitely for me, I I gotta say, I favor. I would definitely give a little bit of favoring towards the side of uh, Team Anarchy's composition here. It's just the more, I think, standard composition, so to speak. We're seeing coming out from them. It has a very clear idea of okay, we're gonna look for picks with the Zoe. Uh, we have the Alistair if we need to team fight, and then you know with the Darius Graves, we've got some bruisers, we've got some abilities to go through, going through that side. Whereas on the other side, for the side of Illumination Spectrum, we're seeing the Echo taking the Smite in the mid lane, and that is something. Yeah, uh, it's not a troll. That's a little bit more common, as we're seeing really? mid laners. They just like to, yeah, they take the Smite so that they can either start smiting away camps. It can give them scuttle control. It gives them. New, some of those neutral camp controls that you normally wouldn't have and it does allow the mid laner to either steal away some of the jungle or just shove the wave in farm it's almost like uh it's very similar to taking a dematerializer to the matchup okay. where it just allows you to clear the creeps push forward and then go through it from that route interesting so uh, to choose that over something like an ignite or a tp um, so why would someone favor smite over uh I can't granted a longer cooldown, but I think for a long time it's been seen as a as a better summoner spell to take. Oh yeah, I mean it's definitely it speaks to that you're gonna look to roam, right? We're gonna expect to see Echo try to shove in the wave as much as he can, and then move out, move through the rest of the lane, and try to impact the side lanes. The only the only reason why you you mostly just take that is either a if you're trying to shut down the enemy jungler, or if you're just trying to kind of clear wave clear as fast as you can so in this matchup right we're seeing azurex fire he's already doing exactly what you would expect to do with that smite and or say indigo in the fight, fight in the around that blue buff sorry well the red yeah, buff just gonna take down viper fang a lot there but duck soul gonna be same if you come join gonna back up quickly viper fang saying he doesn't he doesn't really like it so he's gonna shoot him in the face a few times with a shotgun but nothing else can come from that yeah, so that will buy them some space. It's a good invade from the side of Indigo, just to try to get that early pressure down onto Viper Fang, knowing that uh, as the Graves, yes, his sustain is okay, is going to be better moving around, but uh, Viper Fang really just didn't even care about it. Is he just kind of ate up all the damage and walked away? He knows that with yeah. Fleet Footwork, he'll sustain. He'll be able to regen a lot of that health, so it's not too much of an issue. 
as he's going to be able to move through that. But the thing I do want to talk about is oh, Azurk's wow. fire on the Echo. Wow. Forced flash from the Darius up top lane. But to finish off that point, uh, Echo immediately shoves in level 1, shoves the wave in, moves over to the Raptors, takes the Raptors using that smite, and then goes back to lane. And I think that's the trend we're going to be seeing a lot more of across this game. As an Azurex, uh, now that he's out of this early game, right? Or as he moves through the early game, trying to get past level 6, as you see, they might go in on the Graves. Yeah, I mean, not much happening there. Um, as Piper being able to quickly escape from that one. Uh, yeah, let's get out of it. But yeah, so, I mean, that's just, that's right there is pretty much the whole reason why you would take the smite, or why we're expecting to see that smite, is just off of the pure ability for Azurx Fire to shove in the waves, get level advantages. With the way the jungle works right now, there's just so much more experience to be had if you're able to farm out uh, jungle camps on top of your own lane minions. And so that's where it does give them kind of a little bit of an easier time, or it gives, them, it gives you an advantage in the lane that taking something like a TP or an Ignite, it wouldn't necessarily get in terms of get you in terms of experience. <laughs> it looks like Dom, Dom's tried to do something with a headbutt knockout, but he was alone and just took damage from both of the strong strong damage outputs uh, from the illumination. So. Not really yeah. sure what was the intention, intention there. Uh, I think, if anything, maybe just to buy pressure. But yeah, yeah it's very weird seeing though, I mean, we talk about this might this is probably going to be one of the talking points for the rest of the the match but we talk about it that azrex fire yeah he took the smite to the mid lane and that works well but it's very weird to me that he still went for that first item talisman just because of the fact that that really only helps him when he's trying to clear out those jungle camps and for the most part it's it's more like a 75 25 split that we would expect to see azrex uh in terms of he's going to spend 75 percent of his time in his lane 25% farming out the jungle, but Duck Solo, he might actually be a little bit caught out here as the Sleepy Trouble Bob, I think, will just kind of keep him safe. Yeah, but there, Indigo was weird. kind of stuck in his enemy's jungle, but I uh, noticed Duck Solo sitting alone, thought he could do something to him, but sadly nothing came from it. Oh, at bot lane, looks like we're going to have this side of, of Anarchy just do a huge damage to Wolfie. But once again, yeah. brought low. That was also a knight used. But is he even gonna try to stay around? Yeah, yeah, so that was that's kind of what you want to see if you're the side with the Alistair. At the at this current point in the game, it gives you the ability to you know, he wants to look for engages now as they approach the level six mark. Uh obviously before Alistair gets all of his skills, he's a lot weaker than the brand, but as time goes on, if Dom's descending can get those good engages down onto him. It would be a lot easier for him, and it, that's really how they're going to win the lane. Just because Lucian, he wants to play aggressive, right? He wants to be in your face, get those quick trades, get those um, potentially all-in trades against... Especially when you're going up against a Varus, right? If you can get quick poke off, great. If it's more than, let's call it, six auto attacks worth of trading, though, that's when you're you're in a bad spot because then Destro can kind of roll out two full sets of auto attacks into movement. But I do like the play here from the side of Spectrum... Uh, just to that, or I'm sorry, Illumination Spectrum, just so that they can just push up the top wave, try to get pressure onto this turret. Because if they can open up the map a little bit for COG Forever, kind of allow him to be a split pushing threat, that's when they can kind of use that to their advantage instead of being forced into, you know, what you would expect to see a TP play coming out from Great Jace as the game moves forward. Yeah, for sure. I really liked Great Jace as well as he saw the. He saw his Zinjo on the ward, so he didn't try to stick around underneath the tower. It just gave the respect to the dive that could have happened from CLG as he did have his ultimate up. Yeah, Thankfully, I mean, having around. that rage will be a, will pretty much allow him to be as aggressive as he wants to against the Darius. He do even prevent him from getting hit up with the dunk because he can just pop it off once he's a little bit low. But this is a little bit of an interesting scenario right because if you're on the side of spectrum illumination you definitely want to maybe or illumination spectrum you definitely want to make a lot of early game plays with your top side of the map right with the trindamir with the zin Shao, and with the brand you want to just get a lot of good damage out yes varus wants to scale up so maybe they're waiting for 
I'm Destro to get a little bit of a rage play going on and to get some of these early items. But as the game moves forward, that Alistair is going to be harder and harder to gank. And so it does right now it's like Rage Chase is catching CLG out right away. Like we're seeing if the trainer is able to get out. Undang Rage is going to be popped, still trying to escape as much as possible. It's like Indigo to be joining, but this burn is going to oh. do enough to take out the forever. That's going to be first blood over to Great Face. Yeah, and that is a very, very... If you are the side of uh, COG Forever, you are very, very sad there. Because even through the ult, if the bleed stacks are still on him, that is where Great Jace just has a wonderful time. Uh, that's kind of like that, that slight counterfeit for the Darius into Trindamir matchup. Where, yes, you know, Trin needs to kind of save his uh, heal for after his ult finishes off. Because if he doesn't... Uh, the bleed from Darius will just be a big contributing Aww. factor down the stretch. As we're seeing some good traits coming out, but nothing really too crazy happening. Even though that first blood did go over to the side of Great Jace, it actually, they're still relatively okay. Oh, it's like as a you see third down down. Wow. That was huge damage from Azure for Expire. As he just jumped in, Eid, and then jumped straight away with his ultimate to get out of there. I was like, they're going to yeah. take the Ocean Drake off of that. And that's pretty much as clean as that gets. That dive, they didn't even really need to burn a whole lot for it. They burned the Varisalt, the Echo Alt. But overall, they don't even really care. They get a free Dragon for it. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about that smite in the mid lane. Yes, Azurex Fire didn't need to smite recently. He waited to save it for the Dragon. As you're seeing, even more aggression down onto the Graves as yeah, he's going Oh, we're going to switch out. We'll give a little 1, 2, and Indigo. But it looks like he's not going to make it out and going to eat two oh, first oh, shots. Beautiful going to do a 1, 2 switch out from Azrax Fire and Indigo. But looks like Indigo went a little bit too close. And he paid for his life. Yeah, and that was just a great use of flash there from Viper Fang. He waited until Indigo overcommits when he flashed for it. Immediately oh, gets the flash Marshall back. doesn't like it and gonna get a kill right back on him as she gets that back with the AP <laughs> item she bought. Yeah, and so now a little bit of overextension. They stay a little bit too long onto the side of uh, Illumination Spectrum as that was not where you want to be. You know, you want to shove the wave in, sure. Yes, they wanted to dive the grave, sure. But when that fails, Azurx Fire, he should have just backed off, went back to base, you know, gotten himself out of danger because he was so low he didn't have alt available because we saw him use it in the bot lane dive he didn't have flash because obviously he had to flash out from the graves fight you have no reason to stay in that lane afterwards knowing that zoe probably backed a long long time ago oh, this might be dangerous wow. that this is, is huge also coming damage. from the power star it's gonna be an ignite pot from the Alstar start and duck solo can i get a second kill it's gonna be two yeah. kills for the mid laner and I don't, I got a question what Indigo was doing there. He saw that he was sitting, he was clearing a pink ward. So obviously, yes, they have vision on you. And with Zoe's miss, when Zoe's missing from the mid lane, you always gotta keep that in mind that that sleepy bubble or that sleepy bubble can just kind of hit you from way out of range. It gains more range when it goes over a wall, and that's just dangerous. And you have no reason to try to clear a ward without vision of the Zoe because that's exactly what's gonna happen to you every single time especially when you're up towards that mid lane and uh, there you go it's like we're seeing viper fang trying to do what he can to counter jungle the indigo as indigo is doing so well that in the beginning of the game he's gonna be spotted out head up to the top lane to s try to support the great jace yeah, and so if you're on the side of uh, illumination spectrum right this is the lane that you really want to try to impact but viper fang this is the lane so forever CLG forever. You know what? I have, I have my ult. I'm not scared. I'm just gonna get a few autos and then walk away. Yeah, and so that to continue that point, right? This is the lane you want to impact because Trindemir has a split push threat. If he gets to the point where nobody can deal with him, just because of the okay, fact that he has that ult. Oh man, I'm not sure that CLG forever had his ultimate, but he didn't really do much with it. But Indigo versus Great Chase in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's gonna Indigo's gonna pop his ult, but Great Chase is inside of his ultimate. Still has done. Might be a decimate right away. But on the other side, oh, it's no. going to be put his sleep on the Echo. That's going to be calling you to get a kill for himself. All yeah. right. Okay. So that's a lot of deaths on the side of Illumination Spectrum. And that is a 
a point to be worried about now as this game is uh, approaching the 12 minute mark uh they were doing okay and then within the last few minutes they just make a bunch of mistakes that might honestly cost them a good chunk of the momentum in this game just because Trinimir dies without using his ult. Had he gotten that ult off, that was easily two kills for them in the top side and nobody dies. But instead, COG Forever dies without using ult. Indigo overstays his welcome, gets pulled in by Great Jace. And what was a slight advantage for COG Forever has now become just a huge deficit against a 3 old Darius. And he's sure. just going to oh, really man, start doing lane, the work. being brought up from either side. Wolfie X brought down to about 200 health. On the top side, there's also a little fight happening. As Forever going to be slam dunked onto. Oh. Right. He'd flash forward, but not going to do enough damage. But Indigo jumping around on behind. But destroy. Dropping down to very low health. Stober Doc down to a 50 health there. Descended. Knocked up. Going to be taken out. Viper Fang trying to be chased by Indigo. Slashing with his spear. But not going to do enough damage. Viper Fang looking to see if he can do anything else. And again, oh. Illumination just make it out to that. Azure yeah, Expire. Think... Seeing if he can do anything. He's nope. going to try to roam down here, but he's not going to get anything worthwhile from the late roam. But this is now a big problem. We just talked about it here. That's first turret on the top side. That's first turret gold onto Great Jace, which means he is going to be incredibly far ahead. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back to base and just finishes out that Trinity Force he's been working on. But now that's the problem, right? Because COG Forever is starting to fall behind, this uh, Trindamir... Okay, he's not going for the AP Trindamir. But basically, right, Trindamir needs to be ahead or at the very least even, to even do anything against something like a Dyrus. Trindamir innately is a champ that if you're not moving forward, you're definitely going to have a hard time. And we're starting to see that here, that it's really, really, you know, rough. And then basically on the other side of the map, it was a nice bit of aggression from the side of uh, Illumination Spectrum to try to get that fight down. They thought they were going to get a good flank with Indigo coming in late. But in the end, it almost cost them as they're super late. Oh man, that was not good. I was watching the top lane as there was a little skirmish up top. Um, yes, I'm not really sure what happened, uh, but we just see uh, Destroy down once again, having the top and bottom lanes be having huge amounts of possibilities to carry their side lanes. Uh, once again, you're talking about how CLG Forever was he was even first picked on the side of Illumination, um, and it's not really sh he's not really showing the power of this pick at this point, as he is getting absolutely destroyed by Viper and Great Jace at this moment. Um. Yeah, and so this is a big problem, right? When the thing that you first picked this match uh, basically just goes in and just loses out, you know, yeah. that's a big problem because Trindamir comps, they don't work basically they just don't and so now right or right, basically right when put behind i guess i should say they just don't work and it's kind of a problem for the side of the side of illumination spectrum now there is they aren't quite out of this one just yet right this varus pick is going to be destro is kind of like their insurance policy if you're going to call it that right a late game scaling varus you know he can put down a lot of cc he can get a lot of these procs off there isn't a full tank on the side of uh, Team Anarchy, so that's where they have a chance, right? Varus can just kind of burn through pretty much everybody on the red side if he can actually get to the point where he's got about four or five items, right? If he can get to that full build Varus and he can allow COG Forever to just wail on the back line, to just dive them in the back, that's when you've got a shot because then, right, yeah, they can. Their team fighting is just a lot of distraction, a lot of dive, and just hoping that Destro can get damage down from the backline. But now they're in a position where they need to stall out the game at least another 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes before they can even get to this point. And as we're seeing, what are they going to get there? As now that engage from Dom is going to be huge for the kill onto uh, Wolfie X. Oh. They have the, in the mid lane as well. Great Jason Viper Fang trying to do what they can, and they might just grab the dragon off of this. There's the vision war, so they see it starting, but can't even do anything about it as Indigo is questioning it. Yeah, and that's, uh, it'd have to be a steal here from Indigo if he's gonna go <gasps> in for it. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, with both mice, both of them try to jump in, but sadly now that we're able to do it. Yeah, 
waited yeah. just a little bit too long from the side of Illumination Spectrum, but it was close. That I like the idea, right? That double smite does allow you to go for more objective steals if you can get it. But yeah. you both have to get into the pit a little bit sooner than that if they want to burn it like that. Well, yeah, now that's going to be, to, to go back to that bottom play, that's going to be the story for, I think, the rest of the game happen here. again, though, as it's probably going to be jumped on again by the by Doms. Super Duck, once again, going up, Blade of Gloom King, but not going to do enough damage that time. Got our brand passive, jumped on Super Duck, being not being exhausted. Viper Fang slowly dying from health, but the ultimate coming oh. out from Viper Fang and also dropping that Rip Herald, trying to get that tier 1 tower. That's going to be second tower being taken in the bottom lane if they're able to get that Rip Herald onto it. Just yeah, like, they should be able to get the charge. Top side, though. Side, we're seeing a one on one from CLG Forever at Great Just once again. Ultimate has been burned by the Trinomir, but Indigo flashing in, slowing the Darius down to 100 health, knocked up. And that's going to be at least one kill on the opposite side. But on the bottom side, as again, Rip Herald going to get one charge into that bottom tier to it before falling. That's going to be a three on two still. The bottom lane. Yeah, so good play from the side of Illumination Spectrum on the top side of the map to get that one kill onto Great Jace. They definitely needed to shut down the Darius before it, things really start to get out of the hand. Although it is pretty rough for them on that side of the map. But Anarchy with a good macro play here, they they don't really need to go for the crazy dives right now because they had the Rift Herald. They know that they just needed to push for the turret, siege up a little bit more. And effectively, they get two turrets off of that swing of just good macro rotations. And now that puts them in a pretty firm gold lead here as we approach the 20 minute mark. And credit where credit's due, Viper Fang has been, I think, where he's needed to be for a good chunk of this game. Um, but the Graves just moving around. He immediately drops the Rift Herald once they know that Indigo is on the top side. That gives them the opening to just get that tier one turret. And potentially, they could have gotten even more if they had gotten a dive off, or if they had gotten any CC abilities off onto the Varus brand. Once again, we also saw the little uh, lane swap coming in from the bottom lane of Anarchy. Uh, Trying to see what they can do. Uh, Darius might be caught out as three people in that bottom jungle to face him. He's going to make it yeah. out safely with the Zoe to guard him uh, with that sleepy bubble trouble. Always in their back pocket. Never know what's going to come from. It hurt. Yeah, and that's where, right, if you're on the side of Illumination Spectrum, the only way you're getting, you know, the way they need to start playing this game is a little bit more defensive and not offensive. Oh, and like losing himself. Is I'm just trying to go jumping it onto the Darius. But we're seeing Viper Fang jump over on the Blast Cone. Gonna get one kill onto the, onto that Zin's out. Number two onto the brand. And they're chasing down this throw for the end as Aris Fire also joining in. Double flash coming in from the Zoe. I would say Echo, it's going to be stunning up. Viper Fang finally going to be dropping as well. So Zoe Paddle starting, able to get out Destro. That's going to be a two for three on the side of Anarchy once again. Yeah, and Anarchy, I mean, I guess I do like the play, or uh, in hindsight, I do like the play from Moonlight Inspection as dive up top side. Doesn't get anything. But yeah, they in the goal, I think he sees an opportunity and tries to make the most out of it. They try to burn down what is one of the biggest people on the side of Anarchy in a Great Jace. And yes, they get the kill very early on, but that allows Viper Fang to just get to their back line and go for that big play. And if they hadn't overchased from the side of Anarchy, that would have been way worse well, for the side of the Spectrum. Just because of the fact that they... Out. Yeah, they almost caught him out too right there. But just because of the fact that they allowed Viper Fang to overextend, which means they got a shutdown gold onto him. And Ducks is solo. It's if he had gone down there as well, that would have been incredibly bad because that's basically three shutdowns they would have given over in a very, very short of short amount of time. And if you're trying to close out this game, you know you don't want to let this game get to a very late late phase because of the Chindamir, because of the Varus, because of the picks. You need to start looking for these closeout plays rather than just constantly see hero dive hero just because of the fact that they're ahead right now now on the side of illumination spectrum if they can find more picks like that they definitely put themselves in a reasonable level of getting back in the game the gold lead is now sitting at just over five thousand 
But whoa, this is a very risky call here from the side of Anarchy. As yeah, they right just here on the Baron. Into the Baron. They did see the three people in the bottom lane. Uh, so they might have thought that, like, hey, there's three people that are definitely not around this Baron right now. But the two people that have Smite are there. So this is the one chance that we have Elimination jumping in, trying to do what they can, but they all kind of come out too early for that go, and Indigo's going to be caught in the Baron pit as Anarchy also able to grab that for themselves. Oh, it's I mean, fire just coming a little bit too soon. And Varus, yeah, Varus and Darius fighting in the bottom lane. There's going to be a ducking on them haters. And Darius going to get oh, one kill and going to grab. Seems like he's going to grab the turret as well. Oh, he also killed uh, Brand? Yeah, that was basically <laughs> yeah. a two. That, that was the worst scenario possible for the side of Illumination Spectrum. Not only do they lose the Baron when they have double smite, they get 2v1 in the bottom side by Great Jace. And this could very well be, if not game, just a complete dismantling of their base there. As all of the things that they're trying to work out with their composition ends up oh, wow. in this team fight. Oh, yeah, we just had Ars Fire and Indigo just jump into a five man team that are barren up with not much damage on their side. But this is going to be at least two inhibitors and maybe a win as we did see Indigo and Ars Fire basically commit suicide before this fight is going to start. Yeah, okay, so Looking they won't Anarchy's end the gonna... game yet. They're going to back off. Like grab Mountain Drake on the way back. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. could very well. The map is really theirs to take now. There isn't really much anybody on the side of uh, Illumination Spectrum can do against this just because of the fact that they're so far ahead on the side of Anarchy. And they need they needed to at least have kept their inhibitors alive on the side of Illumination Spectrum because now with the base open, it does kind of give them the ability to just stroll in whenever they really want. They only have one lane left to knock down. And that means it's going to need to be that miracle fight for the side of Illumination Spectrum. Uh, yes, Destro does have the Rage Blade along with the Runan's Hurricane finish. But with no true tank on this, on, with no, actually not even an off tank on the side of Illumination Spectrum, he's going to be really hard pressed to get off all these auto attacks in the middle of a fight. Just because Indigo and CoG Forever they're more than likely than not going to be going down relatively quickly. Indigo is working towards a Trinity Force here, which means he, he's even more squishier than, let's say, a Bruiser's in Shao, right? COG yeah. Forever, yes, he needs to go for damage, but that means that he's really only going to be able to stay alive as long as his ult runs, because anything okay, short of that, he's probably going to die. Yeah, Viper Fang popping his Yomus and his way of the Ruin King. Not going to do anything with it. Oh. Going to make it out alive on the side of forever and they're gonna look to take this tier two top turret it's like yeah, there's no competition on the side of elimination to to contest it at all uh, and they don't really have any damage to do it with uh, because of this strong beginning of the game that we've seen illumination that anarchy have yeah i mean and they go this... need to get back quick <laughs> Sorry. yeah this is where they have to hold if they're going to do anything at all. But if you're on the side of Anarchy, there really Dark isn't fire. any pressure. I've seen these small little stuns being thrown out by uh, Echo trying to do what he can. Again, with the Baron up minions, they just do. It is our two tanky at this point. Um, and the turret is being slowly whittled down. No fight yet, as Anarchy just seems to slowly be taking the. Illumination base. Illumination doesn't want to go in for full fight because they feel like it will be a, five, a full ace on their team. But CLG Forever taking a huge paddle start to the face. Are seeing it hopefully engage on time, just so brought down to half health. And my computer just lagged out as a huge fight happening in mid lane. That's something just happened. They're all <laughs> dead. That's, that's all you need to know. That's the short yeah. hand notes. Anarchy creates anarchy in the base and. Yeah. <laughs> They just roll over Illumination Spectrum in that last fight, and very disgusting, but that's GG to Team Anarchy. Yeah, just seemed like we never saw uh, Illumination get rolling slowly. Um, which is a shame, but not much you can do at that point when the Darius and the uh, Illusion seem to just win on both sides of the map, as well as Viper Fang helping out either side. Um, and Duck Solo just didn't didn't give over a kill to the Echo. Um, 
So there's not much better you can see about about a team, I, except to win all around the map. Yeah, I mean, I they had good early game proactive movements from the side of Team Illumination Spectrum, but a few critical mistakes here and there just put them so far behind. Yeah, I mean that one fight where Shinrin Forever forgot to ult, which then caused them to lose two kills, two great Jace in the top side. And that overextension from Indigo and uh, Azurex Fire in the mid lane. These are the things that compounded into just an early game lead for the side of Team Anarchy. And when you have an early game lead like that, as the, the better team fighting composition, or the team with just better engage or just better tools to go for it, it really causes a lot of havoc. It makes the game so difficult to play against. And we saw that happen there that there really wasn't anything that Illumination Spectrum could do once Team Anarchy got rolling. Yeah, I'm looking at the the Twitch chat right now, seeing a few of the comments that were made. Maybe the Jin should have pressured the trend uh, to help the trend out. Um, and we saw it in the beginning of the game, but just as uh, the Graves got a lot stronger very quickly, it became very difficult uh, for trend for Xin Zhao to match that pressure. Um, it's yeah, a shame and, uh, it happens. Yeah, when a game gets, gets started out that quickly, uh, it's hard to come back from it. Uh, but yes, looking at this whole game, who do you think would you give to be MVP? Oh, I think for me, that one has definitely got to be to uh, Viper Fang there on the Graves. Uh, he definitely, in that early game, when things were going, uh, weren't going necessarily their way, he made the right moves across the map, you know, by ganking the bottom lane, by ganking, by creating that play for Indigo to kind of mess up. It got him an, a solo kill, and then it led to Duck Solo getting the follow-up kill onto Azurex Fire. And then also in the top lane fight, he kind of was... He, he put pressure in all the lanes, and that allowed them, I think, to kind of get that early game lead in a way. Yes, a, a, some of it was Illumination Spectrum giving gold over to the side of Team Anarchy, but I think Viper Fang did a great job of capitalizing that, and then from there, putting on so much pressure onto the side of um, the other team. And I couldn't agree more. That's a, that was a great analysis coming out from, uh, from you, my, my pal k uh, Yeah, coming up, I think I would agree with you. I would agree with all that. Uh, that it should go over to the graves of that game. Um, I think we will be taking a break uh, right now. And when we come back around 8 CST time, it'll be Ace Machine versus Ruby. Um, I'm excited for this next game coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be joined with KTAD once again. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, see you guys in a